Hi, hi, I'm Anakan. I'm an ear, nose and throat surgeon based in London and I specialize in managing problems affecting the nose. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about an operation I regularly perform called endoscopic sinus surgery. So let's start by explaining what the sinuses are and the problems that can occur in the sinuses that can cause you problems related to your nose and across your face. The sinuses are air-filled spaces within the bone of your head that connect to the inside of your nose through small openings. There are four pairs of sinuses. The frontal sinuses in your forehead, the maxillary sinuses in your cheeks, the ethmoid sinuses between your eyes, and the sphenoid sinuses at the very back of the nose. They all have the same pink lining found within your nose called mucosa. The mucosa acts to warm and humidify as well as filter air as it passes through your nose. But sometimes the sinuses can become congested and the mucosa can become thickened, leading to symptoms of a blocked and runny nose, as well as pressure across your cheeks and forehead and reduced sense of smell. This can often be caused by a common cold due to viruses and sometimes by bacterial infections. We call this acute sinusitis. These symptoms are often short-lived and well treated with medication to relieve the congestion such as nasal rinses or short courses of nasal decongestants. When a patient's symptoms are more persistent, this can be due to allergies, chronic rhinosinusitis or growth within the nose called nasal polyps. More rarely, sinusitis can also be caused by tooth infections or other diseases affecting the nose. Most allergies and chronic sinusitis or chronic rhinosinusitis can be managed successfully with long-term medication in the form of topical nasal steroid sprays, antihistamines, and occasionally prolonged courses of antibiotics. Sometimes these medications may not work if they're not used correctly. This is especially true with nasal steroid sprays. Please see my video about how to take a nasal steroid spray properly for more information about this. However, if medical treatment has not provided enough benefit or there is an anatomical problem such as a blockage between the connection between the sinuses and nasal passages, patients may benefit from endoscopic sinus surgery. This surgery is not simply an alternative to medical treatment, but a way of improving the delivery of medication into your nose so that it works better. Endoscopic sinus surgery covers a wide range of operations that so use a long, thin camera called an endoscope that guides surgical instruments inside the nose and sinuses. This type of surgery involves no cuts to the skin and there are no scars on the nose or face after surgery. This surgery is usually undertaken under general anesthetic, but in some more limited cases can sometimes be performed under local anesthetic. During surgery, the endoscope is inserted into the nose and surgical instruments are used to remove bone around the openings of the sinuses inside your nose. Therefore, these openings become much wider and allow medication to get into the sinuses more easily after surgery. Additionally, any infective fluid or tissue is cleared out completely from the sinuses, and this is especially important if there is a presence of fungal infection, which has to be removed entirely. Abnormal growths within the nose and sinuses can also be removed through this type of surgery. We are very careful not to damage any of the structures that are close to the nose, such as the eyes or bone around the brain, but this is a potential risk of the surgery. At the end of surgery, dissolvable nasal packs are sometimes placed inside the nose to help with the healing process and prevent excessive bleeding after surgery. These packs are not usually uncomfortable and can be gently removed if there are any remaining when you are seen in the outpatient clinic a few weeks after surgery. After endoscopic sinus surgery, the nose can feel quite stuffy and there can be a small amount of minor bleeding that occurs in the following few weeks. 
In order to avoid excessive bleeding, I advise patients to avoid hot drinks and hot showers and certainly to avoid any vigorous exercise for two weeks following surgery. I always advise my patients to use a salt water nasal rinse regularly after surgery to clear out any clotted blood or crusts within the nose and therefore help speed up the healing process. In the same way that you can form a scab after you accidentally make a cut on the skin, scabs or crusts can form inside the nose after surgery and washing them out can help speed up your recovery. I also usually advise patients to start using topical nasal steroid medication soon after surgery. This is usually in the form of nasal drops but can also be nasal sprays as well. In the first couple of weeks after surgery it can be quite uncomfortable because of the congestion within your nose but following this patients usually notice a significant improvement in their symptoms. In order to maintain this improvement however it is essential to keep using nasal medication long term otherwise symptoms can recur and even worsen. Remember that in most cases endoscopic sinus surgery does not replace medical treatment but it does make medical treatment work better. Mm -hmm.